Hello guys, welcome back to Beyond the Realms, and 2013 was a great year for movies, and uh, you know, I think horror had a pretty good, solid year. Um, you know, last year, 2012, I didn't even do a top 10 horror, there was not top 10 that I could even come up with, I mean, that's how bad I felt 2012 was. 2013 is much better. I saw a lot more newer horror films this year and um, I came up with a list so here it goes. Um, I will show you the ones that I have like a physical copy of but some of these I don't. Um, number 10 is State of Emergency. This is a zombie film from I believe it's from Australia. Uh, I watched this on Netflix and I really liked it. I mean it's a subtle uh, zombie film. There's not a bunch of crazy stuff that happens in it. It's much more character driven. Um, just a calm zombie film, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, I reviewed this film earlier this year. I really enjoyed it a lot. So number 10 is State of Emergency. Number 9 is the last horror film that I watched of this year, and that is Your Next. Um, <clears throat> I know a lot of people really flipped out over this film. Um, I liked it, but I didn't love it. I mean, to me, you know, it yeah, it had some great gore and it was fun. I loved, you know, how you know it didn't take itself too serious. I liked all that stuff about it, um, but in the end, to me, it was just another home invasion movie. You know, just slightly more violent, uh, but I did like it. I mean, you know, I, I liked um, uh, the girl that played the lead, how she became this this badass in it, you know, and I heard somebody uh, refer to this film as like um, the home alone for adults, and I can see that, um, <clears throat> so yeah, number nine is your next, number eight, VHS 2, um, I like this one, to me, the one, um, what is it, uh, Safe Haven in this, uh, the one with the cult, I think that that was probably the best entry out of both movies combined, I just really enjoyed this one a lot. I don't I don't think it was quite as solid as the first one. I think there was a few entries in this one. It was kind of weak. Um, but overall, I, I really enjoyed VHS 2, and I look forward to Part 3. I'm pretty sure they're doing one. Um, number 7 is one that I do have here. Um, wow, and I'm actually not... don't have all this together like I thought I would. Uh, where did this go? I just had it here. Oh, it fell on the floor. Number seven is Blood Runs Cold. I really like this one a lot. This was a good slasher film, and it's perfect for right now, this time of year. We're, we're in the middle of a snowstorm here. This is the type of film I would want to watch right now. But, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It's a good, fun slasher. Uh, the You know, the killer here, uh, very... Uh, mysterious. They don't explain a lot about him and there's just strange stuff that happens with him. This is another film I reviewed this year, but I really enjoyed this a lot. And this one actually to me has got pretty good replay value. So this comes in at number seven for me. Um, number six is another one that I don't have. Um, it is Insidious Chapter 2. This is one that I just watched the other day also. I watched it this film and your next before I did my list. Those two two horror films I definitely wanted to get in. But um, yeah, I give number six to Insidious Chapter Two. To me, it didn't have the creep factor as the first one, not nearly as much, but I did like how it expanded upon the universe that they set up in the first film. It goes it goes more into the further, explains more about that. And um, I just I liked it. I really love how they tied in stuff with the first one. Uh, that, to me, that was just really cool, and, and it was it's still an enjoyable film, even though it didn't. I mean, there was, wasn't anything in this that creeped me out, um, whereas the first one really did. It was the first film in years to creep me out, and that actually um, was my favorite horror film of 2011. So yeah, that was number six. Number five, and this one it might be a little bit controversial. Some may be wondering you know, why I would put this in here, but I really enjoyed this film. I liked it much more than I thought I would. It was World War Z. To me, this is like a Roland Emmerich zombie film. It's like a, a, a disaster film on a huge scale, and it has zombies in it. I really like this one a lot. I was really entertained with this. I've watched it a couple times now, and I just enjoyed the hell out of it, whereas I didn't think I would enjoy it at all. Uh, to me, it's just a fun film. I like Brad Pitt in it. I like some of the humongous zombie uh, attack set pieces they had in this. And um, it was just a lot better than what, I, definitely a lot better than I expected it to be. Number four, another one I do not have yet, 
it is Stoker. Now, um, some people may put this film in with dramas, I would guess you could say, but I still consider this film a horror film. I loved it. It, 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 it Very character-driven, just awesome acting in this all the way around. And, you know, it's often compared to uh, Shadow of a Doubt, Alfred Hitchcock, and I can definitely see why, because it's it, basically the same film. Uh, it's just modernized, updated... But it's still, it, it's, I don't know, it, it still felt original too, in some odd way. But I really enjoyed this film a lot, and you don't hear too many people talk about it, and I just think it's fantastic. Definitely give it a shot if you haven't seen it. Um, coming in at number three, James Wan once again, and this one is The Conjuring. Um, I think this is popping up on a lot of people's lists this year. I just it thoroughly enjoyed this all the way around. I saw it twice in a theater. Um, I'm so happy to own it, and I just I love it. I just think it's you know it's it's not the most original film, sure, but it's just the way he did it. James Wan has a way of setting up tense moments, really good suspense, and that's what's missing, I think, in a lot of horror cinema nowadays, as far as when it comes to scary stuff. Um, to me, this film was scary. I, I just enjoyed the hell out of it. And I think it's going to be one from this era of horror films that's going to be looked back on as one of the classics. I, I firmly believe that. Um, number two, another one that, we, you know, this is one that a lot of people didn't like, but I loved it. Anybody that's watched my channel already knows that, and it is The Lords of Salem. I just... Um, I think Rob Zombie really nailed it with this. This is another one I, I got to see. That This had a very limited theatrical run, but I actually got to see it twice in the theater. And I just love how it's this weird, twisted, bizarre, fever dream type film that's it's very reminiscent of the old Italian films and uh, just more subtle horror films like Rosemary's Baby, um, elements of The Shining, just things like that. I mean, I, I, I just think Rob Zombie really nailed it in this. And I was worried about Sherry Moon being in the lead, but I thought she did great. I mean, I, I not well, maybe not great, but great for Sherry Moon. She did really good, I should say. But I just love the hell out of this film. And, you know, I, this may possibly be my favorite Rob Zombie film. I still, it's so hard for me to decide between this and uh, Devil's Rejects. But, yeah, I mean, as you can see there, the poster has been behind me there for a while in my videos. And number one for me in this film is tremendously underrated, and it is from Brandon Cronenberg. It is antiviral. Um, there's just not enough people that talk about this film or even know about this film. I think it's a real shame because this film is just so awesome. It is so, I mean... The social commentary from this film and and how it just it captures, uh, you know, celebrity worship and just escapism in general. Um, it's just so great. I think I, I love the coldness of the characters in this. That's one thing I've heard some people say that they, you know, they couldn't identify the characters. It was they were too cold. There was nothing to really latch on and feel empty for them or anything. But I think that that's how this film should be for the content. I mean, these people have just they've lost their identity. They've lost their soul. They just it's reached a point in our society where people just have a hard time finding meaning in themselves and for themselves and I think that that's very relevant even today and this is this is definitely a scary social commentary of where society is heading if we're not careful and get stuff like this under control um, I just think uh, Brandon Cronenberg did an amazing job in this and this just really excites me to see what he does next because for this being his first film I, I just it's it's incredible. I mean, it's up there with some of the best directorial debuts that I've ever seen. Um, and I, I truly, firmly call this film a masterpiece um, of this era. I think it's, you know, and this is one that, you know, a lot of people may look at this and say, oh, it's not really a horror film, it's a sci-fi film. But to me, it's definitely horror. It's, it's their sci-fi, no question. It's a sci-fi horror film, but it's a body horror. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a horror of what somebody goes through. I mean, what he goes through and what just the characters go through in this, it's just, it's horrific. And if it's horrific, I would consider it horror. So this is without question a horror film to me. It's my number one pick for the top horror film of 2013. 
Um, and guys, like I always have to say in these videos, because some people take offense to these uh, top tens, this is just my picks. This is what I love. Um, this is what I really like, and, and I'm you know it took me a long time to nail down this top ten list, but I'm very satisfied with it. Uh, I just you know I'm very happy with these films, and you know it's just my list. It's I'm not saying this is the best horror films of the year for everybody. It's just my list. Some people may be wondering why I didn't put Evil Dead or Maniac in here. Well, I did not like either film. I think they are uh, extremely highly overrated remakes. Um, I, I just didn't enjoy them at all. And uh, quickly, I want to throw in here uh, what I think are the top two best horror uh, Blu-ray releases from this year. Now, there were several. There's so many I could have mentioned here. But these are two of my favorite releases from this year, and it's, it's a dead-on tie between both of these, Nosferatu and the Vincent Price Collection from Scream Factory, a.k.a. Shout Factory. <clears throat> both of these releases are just really, really awesome and should be any any horror fan's collection. Uh, all the films on here are just great. They look awesome, and I just still cannot believe how amazing Nosferatu looks. Guys, both these are definitely worth picking up and adding to your collection. And now I quickly want to go over ones that I give an honorable mention to. These are films that I saw um, and really liked, but just didn't quite make my top ten. Uh, the first one, um, I do not have this one yet, but I want to pick it up. It's Frankenstein's Army. I watched this on Netflix. I really love this film. A lot of awesome practical effects. Uh, it really plays like a first-person shooter. I mean, it's really like a video game type movie. To me, it was just fun as hell. I really, really loved it, and, and I hated not putting this one in my top ten. It was so close, but I like State of Emergency just slightly more, so it edged it out for number ten. Uh, another one that I saw in a theater I don't own is The Purge. I liked it a lot. Um, it was a good movie. It wasn't as good as what I expected it to be, but I look forward to a sequel on that. Uh, next up is Mama, uh, the Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro produced film. Uh, this film was really awesome until it got towards the end. And once they had the reveal of Mama, which I've mentioned in my review, it just it ruined the film. I mean, it literally ruined the film for me. If the creature effect would have been better in this, this film would have been a top ten for me. But the, the CGI creature was just so unbelievably horrible, it took me out of the movie. Uh, next up is Bloodline. Uh, this is an Italian film that I got in for review earlier this year. I really enjoyed this. A good sl uh, slasher creature film. Um, yeah, just it's cool. I really like this one a lot. Check that out. I don't know if you ever hear anybody mention that one, but it's a good one. And the last honorable mention would go to American Mary, which um, I like this film, but not nearly as much as what some other people liked it. Um, to me, it's a very uneven film. And I actually probably liked it even less the second time watching it. Um, it's still good, but I think that that that's probably a little bit overrated of a horror film this year. Um, but yeah, guys, that is my top ten horror films of 2013. I hope you all enjoyed this list. Um, let me know what yours are. Comment down below. Um, I, I'd really like to see some other lists. I'm real big in the list, so um, let me know what your top ten horror films are. And guys, here's to an awesome 2014. Um, can't wait to see what comes up next. Uh, so guys, that is all for now and I appreciate y'all watching guys. Have a good one later.